Hello, I am Dr. Azal from MedicoVisual.com and in today's visual lecture we will talk about the development of kidneys. So we will start the lecture from the very basic concept that let's suppose here is the mesoderm and as you can see that mesoderm is divided into different parts and please remember that above the mesoderm well in this diagram it is above but actually it is dorsal so dorsal to the mesoderm somewhat here will be the uh, the ectoderm like this so here is the ectoderm a layer called ectoderm like this so just a rough diagram and uh, below in this diagram below but actually ventral to this mesoderm is the other layer called endoderm so basically it is a trilaminar germ disc but let's not talk about ectoderm and endoderm our focus will be the mesoderm and in the mesoderm specifically we will talk about the intermediate mesoderm because from the intermediate mesoderm most of the urogenital system including the kidneys develop now in this 3D model this uh, pinkish one is the par axial mesoderm and this greenish one is the lateral plate mesoderm and between the par axial and lateral plate mesoderm this bluish one is the intermediate mesoderm so our focus of discussion mainly will be this intermediate mesoderm intermediate mesoderm now this intermediate mesoderm some authors believe that cranially either this intermediate mesoderm does not develop cranially and at, at the caudal end or even if it develops it is regressed so uh, in any case there is no intermediate mesoderm at the cranial and caudal ends and also please note that the lateral plate mesoderm it is divided into the somatic layer and this one is the saplanchnic layer so somatic somatopleuric mesoderm and saplanchnopleuric mesoderm and between them will be of course the intraembryonic cellulose now let's watch the animation first and here is the craniocaudal folding going on and after the craniocaudal folding there will be the uh, lateral folding like this so as a result of folding now you can see here is the intermediate mesoderm and if we go from the front and if we go inside by the way this is the septum transversum we will not delve into details of septum transversum in this lecture so please note that if uh, we go into the into the embryo we can see that the intermediate mesoderm it will be protruding into the embryo from the dorsal body wall so here is the dorsal body wall this is the back side of the embryo and here is the yeah so here is the front side of the embryo and here is the back side of the embryo now if we go from front we can see that the intermediate mesoderm is protruding into the dorsal body wall it is protruding into the back wall of the embryo if i put it in simple terms the intermediate mesoderm is protruding inside the intra inside the cellulose intraembryonic cellulose from the back side of the embryo now in this 3D model you can appreciate the intermediate mesoderm more clearly. Now here basically I have cut these longitudinal sections and by the way I have I also have shown the ectoderm in this diagram so you can appreciate it more clearly. So here is the intermediate mesoderm the left sided intermediate mesoderm of course the intermediate mesoderm is like many other things it is a bilateral structure. So here you can see the left sided intermediate mesoderm is protruding from the dorsal body wall and of course on the right side of the embryo as well there will be the intermediate mesoderm so let's go inside so here you can see there is the intermediate mesoderm protruding from the dorsal body wall the right sided intermediate mesoderm and here is the left sided intermediate mesoderm now what I will do is that I will uncut this longitudinal section and I will take a transverse section of this embryo. So transverse section by transverse section I mean that there will be the section of embryo somewhat like this. So somewhat like this in a transverse section let's appreciate these structures in a transverse section as well. So let's go to that 3D model. 
so here is the transfer section and here i think you can appreciate the stuff more clearly that after the folding what actually happened let's mark these structures so after the folding here is the paraxial mesoderm and then there is intermediate mesoderm and from intermediate mesoderm uh, actually initially it was somewhat like this this was the uh, the lateral plate mesoderm so here is the saplanchnic this one was the saplanchnic layer and this one was the somatic layer somatopleuric mesoderm and in between will be the that intraembryonic siloam so as it grow further the intraembryonic siloam will become uh, larger so after the intermediate mesoderm there will be the this like this somatic mesoderm somatopleuric mesoderm which will be inner lining lining from inside the uh, the body wall this is the body wall formed by the ectoderm so it is lining the body wall this is the somatic mesoderm somatic mean related to wall wall of the body body wall so somatic mesoderm then there is the intraembryonic saplanchnic mesoderm of course uh, if you understand the previous lecture somewhat here there would be the the endoderm which is forming the uh, the GIT GI tube so this saplanchnic mesoderm it will surround that it will it will be plastering the the GI tube so it is surrounding the viscera so it is also the visceral layer of the peritoneum basically it will form the peritoneum here so it is the visceral layer of peritoneum and this is the somatic layer of peritoneum now here right now you can see that the intermediate mesoderm it is attached with a lateral plate mesoderm and even the paraxial mesoderm it is also attached with the intermediate mesoderm now actually what will happen that this intermediate not intermediate this paraxial mesoderm it will separate from here and it will form uh, here as well it will go go around and it will form the the what is this the vertebral column and of course it will be divided into sclerotome dermatome myotome it will form some components of skin some component of some uh, different types of muscles and so on let's not go into that and but the thing is that it will be separated so let's just forget about the paraxial mesoderm but the thing is that not only the paraxial mesoderm separates but the intermediate mesoderm it also gets separated from the lateral plate mesoderm and it will initially go behind the behind this lateral plate mesoderm so let's watch the animation so it will separate from here and let's just remove it forget about it and here you can see what happened that the intermediate mesoderm it also separated from the lateral plate mesoderm now this part of lateral plate mesoderm which is in the front of intermediate mesoderm it is actually the intraembryonic somatopleuric mesoderm and this intraembryonic somatopleuric mesoderm it will form the parietal layer of peritoneum so this parietal layer of peritoneum it is uh, it is surrounding from front it is it is in front of intermediate mesoderm and it will form uh, the it will consist of epithelial cells and it is also called silomic epithelium so let me uh, explain it uh, in a bit more detail so let's suppose here is the intermediate mesoderm like this in front of intermediate mesoderm here will be a layer of epithelium single layer of epithelium and this single layer of epithelium is called silomic epithelium and the silomic epithelium this whole layer actually this layer of silomic epithelium this whole layer is actually called the parietal layer parietal parietal layer of peritoneum or simply parietal peritoneum so it is covered from front by parietal peritoneum but remember intermediate mesoderm is not the intraperitoneal structure because it is not inside the peritoneum it is only covered from one side it is only covered from front by the peritoneum it is not surrounded from all side by, by the peritoneal membranes so it is not intraperitoneal structure it is extra peritoneal well to be precise it is called retroperitoneal structure now what will happen to this intermediate mesoderm that it will proliferate and it will 
it will grow in size and along with this this main layer made this main cord it will also form another cord like structure another column like structure in the middle so in the middle part of intermediate mesoderm there is another column like structure or uh, another you can say cord like structure and this cord like structure is ventromedial to this main structure what are the name of these two chords? These are basically chord like structures and what are the names of these two structures? Let me tell you and here I will clear some of the important concepts as well. So this bluish one is the main component that is going to form the, um, the urogenital system mainly it is going to form the kidney so it is kidney forming chord. So kidney let's write kidney forming Cord. So it is a cord like structure which is going to form kidney. So kidney forming cord. So in uh, in the I think Latin or Greek I don't know precisely they call it nephro. Kidney is called nephro and by forming they say genic. So it is going to form so nephrogenic. So this is nephrogenic cord. It has got several different names as well. Nephric cord, it is also called nephric cord and mainly it is called nephrogenic cord. Why nephrogenic? Because it is kidney forming cord like structure, simple as that. Then the other cord, this other cord like structure, it is mainly involved in formation of gonads the genital system so what is what should be the name of this cord again very simple genital genital cord or it is also called gonadal cord now here i am using the term cord nephrogenic cord and gonadal cord but you might have uh, had read the word ridge somewhere, gonadal ridge for example or nephrogenic ridge. Now what is the nephrogenic ridge and what is the difference between nephrogenic ridge uh, and the nephrogenic cord? Now please understand this is an important concept. Now you can see that the silomic epithelium is covering both of these structures and both of these structures are derived from the intermediate mesoderm. Now here if we come to the genital cord here this uh, uh, this silomic epithelium it is tightly associated with the genital cord and it is involved in some of the structures that are related with gonads. So we can say that the silomic e epithelium is actively involved in the development of gonads. So what I mean by this is that the silomic epithelium it is involved actively in the process of formation of gonads. So that is why both of these structures they are typically considered as a single entity. They are considered as a single entity and they rarely use the term cord. They almost always you will see in the books that it is written that this is the gonadal ridge. So what is gonadal ridge? Gonadal ridge is nothing but it is the genital cord plus silomic epithelium or you can say if the genital cord is covered with the silomic epithelium and we consider this whole structure so if we just talk about this uh, uh, gonadal gonadal cord only then this is gonadal cord but if we consider the the silomic epithelium which is in front of it and uh, later we will see that it will send some processes into this and it will be actively involved in its development so this structure this just this genital cord along with the silomic epithelium both of these structures as a whole they are called gonadal ridge so gonadal ridge so what is gonadal ridge? Gonadal ridge is the gonadal cord covered with the silomic epithelium. But please note that in literatures some people use these terms interchangeably. For example, I myself have read in some uh, articles and books that somewhere they use the term gonadal cord and other time they use the term gonadal ridge and they are referring to the same structures. But to be really precise, the gonadal cord is this structure 
this behind one and in front of it the silomic epithelium is covering it and hold this structure as a whole is gonadal ridge gonadal cord and hold this structure is the gonadal ridge and similar is the story of nephrogenic cord so nephrogenic cord is this cord like structure and if we consider this covering of epithelium then it is called nephrogenic ridge so nephrogenic cord plus silomic epithelium plus let's write it here plus silomic epithelium this whole structure is called this whole structure will be the nephrogenic nephrogenic ridge so that is important concept that you must understand now understand one rule that the kidney they are anteriorly covered by silomic epithelium but silomic ep epithelium has not to do much with the development of kidney it is just uh, randomly lying there and watching the kidney being developed it is not actively participating in the development of kidney so when we talk about this structure the kidney forming structure we only consider the nephrogenic cord so we simply say there is a nephrogenic cord and here we consider this structure as a whole with the epithelium so here we say that this is the gonadal gonadal ridge so in the textbooks you will always read that there is written that there is a nephrogenic cord and then there is written that there is the gonadal ridge so some of you might get confused that why this is nephrogenic cord and why this is nephrogenic ridge but after watching this lecture from medical visual i hope your concept will become much more clear also please note that both of these structures uh, along with their silomic epithelium they are protruding into the dorsal body wall and both of these structure if we consider both of these structure as a whole as a single entity then this single entity will be called urogenital ridge so this is the ridge which is uh, contributing towards the formation of urogenital system this is the uro part i mean nephrogenic part and this is the genital part so whole this is the uro part and whole this is the genital part so as a whole this thing is the urogenital ridge so here is only the nephrogenic cord part of intermediate mesoderm of course there will be that uh, gonadal cord or gonadal ridge which which was in the middle part of it and in the at the ventromedial aspect of this so i have removed that genital ridge or genital cord and i have removed the mesoderm as well so let's just focus on this cord the kidney forming cord or nephrogenic cord now let's see what happens and by the way here is the cloaca so there there is that cloaca and it is a part of here is the part of hindgut we have already discussed the formation of cloaca and we will discuss a bit more detail of it in the next lecture when we will talk about the the formation of urinary bladder but in today's lecture let's just focus on the nephrogenic cord that what happens with the nephrogenic cord and how it forms the kidney now in the human embryos the three types of kidneys develop what i mean by this don't worry i will just explain now actually what will happen that this nephrogenic cord it will be transformed into three kidney forming structures so here you can see that uh, the cranial one is called pronephros caudal to it is the mesonephros and the caudal most the most caudal structure is the metanephros now actually what happens that uh, in human embryo three kidneys develop in the craniocaudal fashion and in the craniocaudal order of advanced design so the caudal most kidney is the metanephric kidney is the most advanced and definitive kidney but uh, caudal to it is the mesonephros which is less advanced and the least advanced kidney here is the pronephros this region actually will form the pronephric kidney now let's see what happens with it so it will form these small globules or you can say small vesicles and these vesicles they will be ultimately transformed into kidney tubules and uh, also note that at their uh, at their distal end here you can see their distal end they will grow and they will grow in such a way that they will meet downward they will grow downward and they will meet their neighboring 
they will meet their neighboring tubule and in this way they will form a duct like structure so here you can see a continuous tube is formed and this uh, this caudal most tube, uh, this caudal most part, it will grow beyond this pronephric region. This it will grow further downwards like this, and ultimately it will open up into the cloaca, and cloaca will form, of course, the urinary bladder. So this duct will open into the urinary bladder. And where our tubules have gone? Actually, what happens that as the uh, caudal pronephric tubules are growing, the cranial pronephric tubules they undergo regression and ultimately all of the pronephric tubules they regress why they regress because they are no more needed in human in small fishes they are the definitive kidney in some small fishes they will form the definitive kidney but for the needs of a complex organism like human such simple kidneys are not enough we need a more advanced kidneys why because we have large bodies we have complicated bodies we ingest a lots of different types of drugs and toxic chemicals that must be taken care of and for that we need a complex system of kidneys we need a complex urinary system we cannot rely on a very simple system but small fishes with their small and less complicated bodies they don't need to uh, produce a complicated type of urine they secrete simple type of urine they excrete simple type of urine and immediately that urine is excreted into the sea but we humans have complex needs so we need a complex kidney and for that the next type of kidney develops and that is the mesonephric kidney and by the way what is the name of this duct so here you can see this duct is forming and this duct is the pronephric duct this is the pronephric duct now what happens that the pronephric tubules are destroyed but the pronephric duct still remains and now the mesonephric kidneys they will also develop actually what happens that this this pronephric duct it will secrete certain chemicals that will uh, induce the formation of mesonephric kidney from this from this mesonephric region or mesonephrose so again similar to pronephrose in the mesonephric region also the tubules will form so here again it will be actually segmented into different parts and by the way what are the name of these segments so you can see uh, 8 to 10 segments are there for example this is a segment this is a segment 1 2 3 4 5 6 segments actually 8 to 10 segments are there but um, because the space was less so i have only shown the six segments so basically these segments are called nephrotomes so there may be pronephrotome and then there may be pronephrotome previously here was the pronephrotome now here is the mesonephrotome mesonephrotome so these segments they will form the uh, vesicles and these vesicle will then form the uh, s-shaped tubules so let's watch the animation so here you can see that they will form these tubules and by the way also note that uh, aorta is there dorsal aorta is also there here you can see something interesting that these mesonephric tubules they are opening into pronephric duct they have not created their own duct but they are using the pronephric duct they say that there is no need to reinvent the wheel this duct is just to collect the urine and somewhere to concentrate it so we do not need to create our own duct we will use the duct that was formed by the pronephrose so they will use the pronephrose pronephric duct and as they take over as, as they assert their ownership on this pronephric duct now this pronephric duct it is no more called pronephric duct 
Although it is the exact same structure, but now we do not call it pro-nephric duct. After they have, after these mesonephric tubules, they have exerted their ownership on this duct. They have taken over this duct and they are opening into this duct. Now it is not called pro-nephric duct. Now the same pro-nephric duct, it is renamed as mesonephric duct. So mesonephric duct is not a new structure. It is a new name. It is the same structure but it is a new name given to that same structure it is the new name given to the pronephric duct after mesonephric tubules start opening into the pronephric duct so please understand this now this uh, mesonephric uh, tubules and this mesonephric kidney uh, they need to filter the blood and to filter the blood uh, the blood vessels a tuft of capillaries they will go inside they will invaginate into this dilated part of of this mesonephric tubule and as it happens it will form the uh, the primitive bowman's capsule so let's watch the animation so tuft of capillaries will and first the blood vessels will grow and ultimately tuft of capillaries will form and this tuft of capillaries is basically called glomerulus so here is the glomerulus and then this cup like structure it is surrounding this glomerulus and by the way this mesonephric tubule they have become um, they have assumed more of an s shaped so they have become s shaped tubules so let's watch the animation again to understand it more clearly so here again let's watch that these blood vessels are arising from the dorsal aorta and they will go into this dilated cup like structure and they will form the glomerulus and s shaped tubule is formed now this is the basic structure of mesonephric kidney they consist of 10 to 12 tubules simple type of tubules and here this blood is filtered into this cup like structure and from here it goes from this tubule and ultimately the urine that they form it is released into mesonephric duct now even this design is relatively simple it is more advanced in as compared to the pronephric kidney but it is still not enough to meet the need of humans so even the mesonephric kidney is destroyed in the human embryo the mesonephric duct and some of the tubules they remain and they take part especially in the male embryo um, I should say only in the male embryo because I think most of it is destroyed in the female embryo. Some remnants may remain there but most of it is actually destroyed. So some components of this mesonephric kidney that take part in development of uh, the, uh, the reproductive system, male reproductive system, but they do not have much to do with the formation of kidney. So this mesonephric kidney is also destroyed. It is also not advanced enough to meet the need of human embryo but remember that in some smaller animals this mesonephric kidney is the definitive kidney right then the third type of kidney the metanephric kidney is the definitive kidney that develops in the human but before that you might be wondering that uh, I have shown the formation of glomerulus in relation to mesonephros, but I haven't shown the formation of glomerulus and Bowman capsule in relation to pronephros. When we were talking about pronephros, the reason is that many authors now believe that uh, in human embryo, the pronephros, they do not form the glomerulus. They do not form the Bowman capsule they do not form the renal corpuscle so uh, that is the reason why I haven't shown but again there is some controversy some people believe some authors believe that pronephros also form pronephric tubules they also form the uh, the glomerulus and all other related structures but anyways all these structures are destroyed and the definitive kidney that develops in the human is this metanephric kidney now actually what happens that uh, from this uh, uh, what is this so from this mesonephric duct which was initially the pronephric duct from the distal end this distal end from this from this distal end of this duct uh, another invagination or outgrowth arises and this outgrowth it will go into the metanephric into this metanephric region it will go into this metanephric kidney 
Now what it will do is that it will stimulate, it will induce the formation of metanephric kidney from this metanephric, uh, from this metanephric region. And this metanephric region in turn it will stimulate the, uh, the division of this this bud, this outgrowth. And by the way, what is the name of this outgrowth or invagination? It is called ureteric, ureteric duct. Why ureteric duct? Because it will form the ureter. And it is also called meta, metanephric duct because it is growing towards the metanephrose. So it is the metanephric duct. This uh, ureteric duct or metanephric duct will induce the formation of uh, the metanephrose. It will, it will induce the differentiation of metanephrose and metanephrose in turn will, uh, it will induce the division, subdivision and division of this, uh, this, uh, this ureteric duct. And this is called reciprocal induction. Reciprocal induction means that one structure inducing the other structure and then other structure in turn is inducing the the same very structure. So this is like two friends. Uh, these two friends uh, they like to study together and one of the friends stimulate the other friend to study and other friend is stimulating the first friend to study harder. So that is the reciprocal what it is called. It is called reciprocal reciprocal induction. Now in next lecture we will see that how uh, the definitive kidney it developed from this metanephrose. So wait for the next lecture. Thank you so much for watching this video.